Hi folks. Um, now, around about the time that um, Jimmy and Claire are, are in North Carolina, um, around about that time, a young Scotsman uh, was leaving the shores of Scotland uh, and making his way um, to North America. And he, I believe, had a great impact um, on world history and on the, on the United States as well. Um, his name is, is John Paul Jones, many of you may know that, and um, I had planned that uh, the title of this, of today's little historical insight, would have been much more positive. In other words, I had planned that the title um, would have read uh, The Scot Who Was the Father of the US Navy. Um, as I've always, over many, many years, understood uh, that that accolade belonged um, to John Paul Jones. However, just uh, doing a wee bit of further research for this video, I discovered that, um, well, something that we all know, history is continually being reassessed, um, and it appears now that there, there are possibly um, two other contenders for this title. Um, John Barry, uh, an officer in, in the Continental Navy, and John Adams, second president um, of the United States. However, today what I'm going to do uh, is to give you the background to John Paul Jones. Um, and I'm afraid then you'll possibly have to make up your own mind. Um, Anyway, John Paul Jones was actually christened John Paul and he was born uh, near the town of Kirkcudbury, um, which is in Dumfries and Galloway, down in the southwest uh, corner of Scotland. Um, just as a little aside there, Dumfries and Galloway is a beautiful region of Scotland. It's, it's often missed by many tourists and, and I would encourage you, if, if you have any time at all when you're in Scotland, uh, to try and visit Dumfries and Galloway. It is a beautiful part with, with many lovely um, towns and villages and its own unique character. Um, and Kirkcudbury, um, it's actually, if you were looking at the spelling of it, a lot of people might, not from Scotland, might call it Kirkcudbright, but if you're, if you're going there and looking for Kirkcudbury, Kirkcudbury, that's how you pronounce it. Um, Kirkcudbury is a beautiful little town with a lovely little harbour and beautiful shops and a lovely square uh, in the middle and a castle and everything you might want. So I would heartily recommend uh, a visit to Kirkcubri and Dumfries and Galloway sometime in the future. Anyway, back to the story. John Paul Jones, um, he, he's born near there um, and he starts his maritime career um, as an apprentice uh, aboard a ship called Friendship which um, sailed out of Whitehaven, which is a, a, a port which is actually just directly across the Solway Firth. Kirkcudbury is on, on the Scots side of the Solway Firth and Whitehaven is directly across the Solway Firth um, in the, the Shire of Cumberland um, in England. So he, he, he gets this job uh, as an apprentice uh, on this ship um, and his older brother, uh, William Paul, had emigrated to Fredericksburg in Virginia and uh, many of um, John Paul Jones's early uh, voyages were actually to Virginia, so he, he got to know it uh, quite well. He, he then served on a, on a number of other different vessels and working his way up um, uh, until he, he, he was a first mate on a ship. Um, and his career then, then received a sort of what you might call an unexpected boost um, when the captain, when both the captain and the ranking mate of, of the ship he was serving on, uh, a brigade called John, um, they both died of yellow fever uh, and, and Jones took over <clears throat> uh, and he successfully sailed the ship back to a safe port and uh, the, the, the Scottish owners were so grateful to him uh, that they made a master of the ship. However, <laughs> uh, on the second voyage of his new command, uh, which was to the West Indies, um, Jones had one of his, his crew flogged 
uh, for allegedly uh, leading a mutiny uh, demanding the early payment of, of wages. Um, now, regrettably, the man died a few weeks later, and there were then accusations uh, that Jones's um, discipline was unnecessarily cruel. So, when he arrived back in Kirkubri, uh, he was imprisoned in the toll booth there, um, although he was then uh, released on bail. Um, John, now this is probably a, an indication of his temperament, which as you see as we go through the story, uh, does affect him. Rather than stay in Kirkubri uh, and face a trial or whatever, he decides to leave Scotland immediately. Um, and he obtains a, a position as captain of a, of a London registered ship, uh, the Betsy. Um, and uh, so, uh, so he's in charge of this, uh, but unfortunately, this his position comes to uh, not a very good end, an ignominious end, you might say. About eighteen months later, um, when he he kills uh, a mutinous uh, crew member with a sword, um, and the dispute again was was over wages. Uh, so. Uh, what John Paul Jones decides to do then is to flee and he chooses to, to flee, to emigrate to, to Fredericksburg, Virginia, where as you may remember um, he, he had had family, although I think his brother had died by that time. He also decides at this time to add the name Jones to his, his name. So this, this is this point um, that actually that John Paul Jones is born. Um, and America now becomes his adopted home. Uh, so the American War of, of Independence ha has just started um, and Jones leaves Virginia and, and travels to Philadelphia uh, to volunteer his, his services um, to, the, to the, the Continental Navy which had just been newly founded um, uh, and this of course was, was the precursor uh, to the mighty US Navy that we, we see today. Um, so he, he is appointed um, first lieutenant uh, on board a 24-gun a frigate um, called Alfred uh, and he sails from the Delaware River in February 1776 um, on what I think was the Continental Navy's first maiden voyage um, and Jones had the honour um, of raising uh, the very first U.S. ensign uh, to be raised on, on a ship. Um, uh, an ensign at, at that stage was called um, the Grand Union Flag uh, and they raised it on, on board that ship as they sailed from the, the Delaware River. Um, so over, over the next 18 months, um, Jones uh, carries out a, a number of ma naval missions um, capturing uh, many vessels uh, and damaging a lot uh, of British assets. Um, however, his temperament comes to the fore again here um, and started to be a, a bit of his undoing um, and he fell out um, uh, with his, his commanding officer, uh, Command Commodore Hopkins. Um, as Jones felt, he, he should have been given greater recognition um, uh, for, for all the victories and, and uh, actions that he, he had uh, instigated and taken part in. Um, however, uh, his commanding officer obviously felt different and Jones was assigned to, a, to a, as captain of a smaller vessel, uh, the USS Ranger, um, and he was sent to France. Um, and told to uh, assist the American cause as much as possible. Now France at this time was neutral um, so that there was practically nothing uh, that Jones could do although he did become friendly with Benjamin Franklin at that time, um, a friendship which apparently lasted. Uh. But however in February 1778 France um, formally allies itself um, with the American revolutionaries uh, and Jones is then able to use French ports as a base uh, to attack Britain. So at first he, he sails up uh, the west coast of Britain 
uh, and uh, he had learned that uh, the Royal Navy sloop of war HMS Drake uh, was in that area and he planned to take it but due to lots of problems between Jones and his crew actually um, the, t the attack uh, had to be called off so instead he, he chose to attack Whitehaven where you may remember um, he had uh, he knew uh, and uh, also to attack Kakubri and he, he would set fire to vessels there and try and do as much damage as possible um, but he, he, he didn't uh, win many prizes for that. However, on uh, deciding to return to France, he learns that the, the, the Drake, HMS Drake, is uh, anchored off Carrick Fergus up in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, and he engages her in combat right away. And uh, after an hour long gun battle, he, he captures her. Um, and he is then able to sail back to Brest in France. Uh, with his own ship and with this uh, magnificent prize of war. Um, the following year, in 1779, uh, Jones takes command of, of a much bigger vessel. It was uh, called the four, it had 42 guns and it was called um, USS Bonhomme Richard, uh, or probably Richard, because it, it was a French vessel uh, that the French had uh, gifted to America. Um, and he sailed again uh, round Britain. Uh, causing lots of problems uh, and scaring people uh, uh, generally um, and then there was a quite a substantial battle with the British Navy uh, off the east coast of uh, Britain and it was called the, the Battle of Flamborough Head um, so it's, it's quite far up uh, the east coast of England and in this battle uh, Jones managed against all the odds uh, to capture the, the 50 gun British frigate HMS Serapis and he did this even although his own ship um, was severely damaged um, and, and actually w was uh, starting to break up um, and it was during this encounter um, that uh, Jones uh, famously replied and you may have heard this quote uh, when he was asked to surrender when things weren't going too well for him uh, in the course of the battle and the British asked him to surrender he shouted, he replied, um, I have not yet begun to fight. Uh, and so it proved to be true because he, he won the day. Um, so he, he sails um, the, the, the British frigate back to France uh, to great acclaim, uh, where King Louis the Sixteenth honours him with the title of Chevalier. Um, and the US Congress uh, award him a gold medal to commemorate his uh, valour and brilliant services. However, after the, the, the American Revolution is over and the United States is formed, um, Jones falls out of favour again with, with those in authority um, and with his superiors. And uh, he, he is a, in France and he has very little to do. Um, so he's asked by um, the Empress Catherine of Russia, who apparently uh, was uh, quite a fan of his, to take up a position uh, of rear admiral in the Russian Navy, which he does. Uh, and he's, he's there for, I think, about two years serving the, the Russians. Uh, subsequently, he comes back and he, and he settles uh, in Paris. Uh, and he sadly, he dies there in 1792 in the St. Louis Cemetery. Um, and there, John Paul Jones lay forgotten until uh, in 1905, um, the, the, the uh, American ambassador to France was, was determined to find his body um, and had been searching many, many cemeteries because regrettably um, all the records had been lost. However, he is successful in this mission. Uh, and uh, Jones's body is uh, ceremoniously brought back to the United States um, aboard the USS Brooklyn, um, accompanied by three other uh, United States um, cruisers. Uh, and in fact, when they, when they, they sailed in uh, out the Potomac, I think it was, there they were seven other battleships escorting them. So it was quite a procession. Uh, 
So this ends on, on April the 24th, um, 1906. Jones's coffin is in, installed uh, in the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis uh, in Maryland. Um, following a ceremony presided over by uh, President Theodore Roosevelt, uh, who paid tribute to him. Uh, and on his sarcophagus uh, are engraved the following words. John Paul Jones, he gave our Navy its earliest traditions of heroism and victory. Now, that John Paul Jones had a strong, even you might say violent temperament, um, and he obviously struggled with authority. Um, and at times he, he did act like a privateer, uh, attacking at will, as it were. All that cannot be denied. However, this Scotsman's capture, first of HMS Drake and, and then of HMS Serapis, you know, were amongst the most important uh, of the Continental Navy's quite few uh, naval victories um, during the, the American Revolution. And they became an important symbol uh, of American spirit and were, I feel, the inspiration um, for the permanent establishment uh, of, of the mighty United States Navy, uh, which started after the revolution. So there you are. I, I do again hope that you've enjoyed this, this little historical insight. Um, uh, and if you have, then I, it would be lovely if you could give me a like and, and please share this with your friends um, so, so that they can uh, see it also. Um, all my, as I've mentioned before, all my videos are available on my YouTube channel, which is called Gordon Scotland. So they're there at any time for you to, to watch again or if you've missed some or whatever. Um, please, these difficult times continue for, for many of us. Uh, please keep yourself safe. And until we meet again, I just send you all the very best from Scotland. <laughs>